I'm not I sure. I need to do that. <laughs> well, we're waiting a little bit for it to come online. I need to fill out that cloud skills challenge now. That's what I'll be doing after this conference. Yeah, I need to also, grab my skills too. Yeah, I think you will have uh, 24 hours to complete it. So just right after the event, just go ahead and <laughs> complete that. Hi, Senia. Awesome. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, thank you so much you for connecting. That's awesome. So what are you going to be talking about today with us? So today I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence in public transportation systems. So should I be sharing my screen now? Yes, yes, please. OK, great. Just one moment. Is my screen visible? Yes, we, yeah, it's visible. OK, cool. So hello, everyone. I'm Sanya from India, and I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence in public transportation systems. So what is public transportation? Public transportation is a form of travel that allows more people to travel across designated routes at minimalistic prices. So buses, trains, metros, all of them encompass public transport and public transport can be said to be the lifeline of any sustainable city. Public transport has numerous advantages that it poses to passengers, to the environment, to the economy and to the community in general. So these advantages are, can be said to be uh, these advantages that we can see on the screen here, that they are environment friendly and that public transportation helps prevent global warming. So let's just take the example of, an, of, an, of a regular bus that we have, which has about 50 um, passengers on it. So the bus reduced the need of 50 private vehicles on the road, thus cutting down on harmful emissions. This also reduced the traffic congestion and increased the land value remarkably by cutting down the number of private with vehicles that could have been used if the bus was not in function. Also, it's very important to know that public transportation facilities like buses and metro services are very economically feasible when you compare them with private vehicles. This is because you actually have to purchase the private vehicle on your own, whereas in the case of buses, you just have to complete a very economically friendly um, and a very viable um, ticket to the public transportation system that you are going to be using. Moreover, public transportation ensures increased mobility to those to those passengers who do not have their own driving licenses, like students or those who cannot drive. Also, it also provides increased mobility to tourists who are not very well aware of the road networks in alien lands. Public transportation is also safer for the elderly and for women because there are a large number of people who are traveling at the same time. But in spite of all these advantages, public transportation could not achieve the popularity that it was supposed to have achieved, and it's largely underappreciated, especially in developing countries. This could be owed to qualitative and quantitative factors. So let's take a look at these factors. Qualitative factors could include factors like overcrowding and unhygienic public restrooms that actually are major turnoffs for people who don't really, uh, who are health conscious, and also for people who have another option with them to use private vehicles, and therefore only captive riders or riders who don't have any alternate solution with them to use public transportation. Now let us look at the qualitative or the quantitative factor for this. Let us assume that this is the network architecture for a particular town and that this arrow basically do, do, uh, denotes the route of the bus that the bus is supposed to take. This however means that all the people who reside, who reside in this part or in this part are not actually provided advantage of the public transportation system and have to compromise on the accessibility Henceforth, public transportation is largely non-uniform and therefore measures need to be taken in order to popularize it further. The solution for this problem is artificial intelligence based ITS or intelligent transportation systems. So intelligent transportation systems are integration between conventional transportation techniques, communication engineering, Internet of Things and above all artificial intelligence. ITS tools can render public transportation operationally appealing and remarkably efficient. Also, if we take a look at the ITS World Bank 2016 toolkit, it states that retrofitting modern extensions to already established 
established infrastructure is inherently tedious, as is the case of developed countries. This means that like in developed countries, uh, when there is already a well established network architecture for public transportation, it is actually very difficult to take down that network and replace it with a modified version of it. However, developing and underdeveloped countries have negligible to minimal transportation pipelines uh, like India. Uh, it becomes really easy to incorporate modifications and changes in those countries. We can also think of this as a, as a typical example by using an example of gardening. So if you have ever um, had an experience with gardening, you would know that if the field that you have is barren, it's really easy to go and plant flowers in it. However, if you already have a well-established garden, it would take a lot of time to actually tear it down, renovate it, and then plant new flowers. This is what the ITS World Bank 2016 toolkit means. We are now going to be taking a look at the various problems associated with public transport and how artificial intelligence based intelligent transport systems can help us deal with those problems. So if you've ever traveled on a public transport in a developing country, you would know that there's actually no way to have the driver of the public transportation vehicle accountable. There could be inherent delays and you would never know act, uh, as to what actually was the main reason behind those delays. You would never be able to find out as to why uh, were you kept waiting at the bus station for approximately 20 minutes and there was no note from the driver or from the control center. And so therefore oblivion of buses or train starting schedule is a major convenience hazard that prompts affluent riders to opt for private transportation instead. The causes of disruptions may never even be found. Also cases like eve teasing and pickpocketing, pickpocketing are several several highlighted issues that really increase the problems associated with public transportation systems. Now, the solution for this could be vehicle tracking by using GPS or global positioning systems an AVL or automatic vehicle location and AVI automatic, automatic vehicle identification. So GPS can provide real time vehicle tracking per every vehicle. So movement of each bus, the trip length, the time, the stopping time per stop and the complete movement of the bus or the vehicle could be monitored. The system can then inform the control system whether the bus is running on the right time or not. And then artificial intelligence could be used to deem as to why is the bus not running it on the right time. GPS systems can also help in controlling instances of eve teasing and pickpocketing as the driver or any passenger around can inform the control room and the police control room vans about the case specifics as to what actually happened in the case and with the mere click of a button your pcr vans would be at the service it could also deem which routes are safer by analyzing data from previous um, tours or previous destination uh, routes of the bus AVL or automatic vehicle location or automatic vehicle identification are the technologies that track transit vehicles in real time using GPS and they could also read number plates using techniques like RFID that is radio frequency identification and image processing. So uh, these techniques are used to identify vehicles and even the letters that are present on the number plates. Information about the vehicle is conveyed to the control center and to the passengers as well. Um, we can use facilities like Azure's cognitive services to identify and recognize vehicles. So if you can see in this example, the blue spots over here, this blue spot over here is basically used to uh, denote um, the initial point from where the bus actually started. And this blue spot over here is basically supposed to be in the point, the destination of the bus. And this red spot over here is basically used to denote where your bus is right now and real time information is passed on to the passengers like expected arrival 7 a.m. running on the right time and bus 441B on the way. Also, in the case of police or the cops investigating some unscrupulous vehicles, you could run the number plate through an image recognition or an object recognition, a sex recognition or uh, an optical character recognition system like the ones offered by Azure's cognitive services. And then it could be used for vehicle recognition. Like for example, in this case, it says vehicle recognized Florence Italy. It's a state official vehicle. Therefore, access has been granted and it has been labeled as a safe vehicle now. If you look at the applications of artificial intelligence and vehicle tracking, we can see that AI can be used to predict the arrival time of the bus or train with respect to its present location and then deem whether the vehicle is running on the right time or not. This means that data collected by the uh, data collected by our services after every trip of the bus can be used to predict as to when would it reach a particular destination X at a particular time. And then if we could compare these times with the newer times after each trip and we can see as to uh, what at what place should the bus be reaching so as to reach the destination in the given time.
AI can also label certain routes as dangerous by analyzing the number of pickpockets or eve teasing incidents that are taking place over there. If you take a look at this GIF over here, you can see that the previous week Intel for route 4B says that there were 10 eve teasing instances and five pickpocket instances, thus labeling the route as dangerous on its own. And even before the crime has been reported, the police control room vans have already been alerted and all the PCR vans on that route have been alerted and they would keep tabs on the bus. Image processing and OCR text recognition technologies could also be used to identify and validate number plates. Now, we are going to take a look at the second problem caused by public transportation system, and that is that public transportation systems usually take a lot of time in order to cater to individual passengers. So passengers dislike public transportation because of comprehensive catering, and that means that they have to stop at multiple positions while private transport caters to private demands only. And so since private transport basically has only one destination in mind, that is your ultimate destination, and public transport has multiple destinations and stops at multiple locations, it could lead to inadvertent delays, and that is why the population pool shifts towards public trans uh, shifts towards private transportation and it started the and uh, st uh, slowly started to desist from using uh, public transportation systems the solution for this is time control and traffic signal priority. So traffic signal priority is a major example of an intelligent transportation system that helps to incline the passenger pool towards public transportation. And how it does that is that it seeks to provide priority to public transportation at traffic signals by reducing their red time and increasing their green time. So TSP systems are integrated with automatic vehicle location frequently when there are very high priority demands. So this means that whenever a public the transport is passing and it has to stop at the signal the signal time even if it was green uh, even if it was red it is changed to green and the vehicle is allowed to pass through this is an example of something called zero weight priority because at times public transportation don't even have to wait for a split second before they are granted access all of these facilities have been taken into consideration so as to prompt more number of passengers to opt for public transportation so phases are extended the phases of the green time are extended or truncated sufficiently quickly such that the light is always green when the vehicle arrives and it quickly turns to red as soon as the vehicle is gone. So there are bus only turns, bus only green phases and bus gating for the bus rapid transit vehicles only. Also, how can we use AI in these instances? It's very important to know that image recognition is very important in this case because um, the green time has been dilated. The green time has been enlarged only for those cases in which a public transportation vehicle has been detected. And as soon as the public transportation vehicle leaves, we have to quickly diminish its green time and change back, revert back to the red color. So AVL and image recognition are used for identifying the bus rapid transit vehicles that are allowed to pass through. Identification prompts uh, the signal systems to dilate the green time after assessing the priority request, whether it's actually a BRT vehicle or is it a false alarm. Signals should quickly change color again as soon as the BRT vehicle has passed so that no private vehicle has actually taken undue advantage of the TSP. Stop time can be reduced further if the BRT is found to be running behind schedule. Artificial intelligence is used to juxtapose or compare the defined arrival time and the predicted time to decide whether a privilege should be granted or not. So this means like examples of zero weight for public transportation systems. Uh, even in some cases, in some countries where there is no system of zero weight for public transportation systems, this is an ex important example uh, that it is in the case of a vehicle, a public transportation vehicle running behind schedule. So artificial intelligence can be used to actually decide whether the vehicle is running behind schedule or not and that if it is running behind schedule uh, it is uh, designated to make up to the loss that it had the time loss that it had by actually providing for a zero red time now we have real-time passenger information. Real-time passenger information system is basically built on automatic vehicle location and GPS technologies. Many people actually get all of them confused, but that's not true because GPS is the technology that is used for real-time passenger information systems. So RTPI is a transparent public information system built on AI transiting data in real time, and it basically gives you real-time updates about where your public transport is right now. RTPI conveys estimated arrival departure times, information about disruption causes before the queue travel. AVL, GPS, radio frequency identification and image processing may be used to generate the data that is displayed by the RTPI as you can see in these examples. RTPI also magnifies customers' experiences. 
So as you can see here, this is the initial location, whereas this is the final destination of our particular public transportation vehicle. So it says at this point that the bus 4C was on its way. Its current location was, let's say, ABC. Expected location was CDE. Its current status was on time and its expected arrival was at about 8 a.m. However, if we look at the case for nearly two minutes after that, um, the bus 4C is still on its way. Its current location has changed from ABC to something called DEF. Its expected location is CDE and it's now late by five minutes due to an accident and its expected arrival time has been changed from 8 a.m. to 8 5 a.m. This is a very good example of a real-time passenger information wherein if somebody is actually in a in, uh, in hurry that person would actually know where the bus is located right now. So this is a very big advantage that ITS has brought for public transportation systems. Let's look at the artificial intelligence applications of RTPI. Like I said, AI can be used to predict the arrival time of the bus or train with respect to its present location, and then it is used to decide whether the vehicle is running on the right time or not. For example, let's just take an example of a case where the bus actually reached its designated destination at the right time. It was flawless. So it would use the data in that case and see that, okay, at a particular point called X, I was Y minutes away from reaching my destination. This means that if at the particular point X, the time that it uh, it still has um, it at a point, particular point called X, uh, if it's running at the right time, it would still take it Y minutes. However, if, if there is a little bit of traffic and other factors, then it would have to take them account and take them into consideration. Next up, AI analyzes metrics and enables passengers as well as fleet managers to exercise control over the operations. Image processing, OCR, text recognition technologies could be used to identify and validate the various number of plates on the vehicles so as to find out and prove that the vehicles running are actually legal and qualified vehicles. Next up, we have intelligent ticketing system where uh, so there are various problems that are arising these days due to a sudden inclination towards cashless economies, and that is actually a very good idea. But intelligent ticketing systems are built for cases of cashless economy. They are much more uh, which make the economy be faster and which ensure more uniformity. The problems could be caused by lack of change, cashless transaction preferences that drive passenger base away. For example, look at this example. The bus conductor says that he only accepts coins, but the passenger only has as a credit card. So to diminish instances like these and to have a more uh, flexible payment option, the intelligent ticketing system was introduced. So as you can see in this example, this is a smart card. So intelligent ticketing system is a system that electronically stores a travel data on a microchip. And this microchip is embedded in a smart card. The contactless smart card is scanned by a transport operator, which in this case is a kiosk. And it could be stored either at a static or a handheld ticket machine or a barrier which authorizes your travel. So inside the smart card are all your tickets, bus tickets, metro tickets, train tickets, tram tickets, and this kiosk is basically reading all the data off of them. And now it has the details. Uh, it has the passengers complete details regarding travel. It can find out from where does it have to detect for, to deduct the prices of the travel, from where does it have to, you know, add any fines uh, and etc. And all the other features associated with travel. If you can take a look at the AI applications, there is just one smart card that is reviewed every 30 days to render every public transportation, be it a bus, be it a tram, be it a metro, accessible to the passengers. So contactless transactions are very useful during COVID-19, of course. Fare deductions, extra road charges, and fine deductions are possible only by integrating optical character recognition and text recognition features in your embedded systems, so as to make it realized as to what, uh, as to on what particular instances should it be deducting, uh, deducting uh, fares, that on what particular instances should it be actually uh, giving discounts to the passengers and so on. And AI is leveraged for deciding which passenger needs what faculties at what particular point in time. Next up, we have automatic passenger counters and overcrowding is a very major problem in public transportation. This agitates passengers and they choose to opt for private transportation instead, obviously, and overcrowding, especially during times like COVID-19, is a very big disappointment and it really needs to be checked. 
So solution for it are automatic passenger counters. So as you can see here, there is this bar, this infrared bar that uh, basically is used to count the number of people who are actually on board. And it says the present capacity is 50. The total capacity says it's 10,000. So this means that it is safe and more number of people could be boarded. So automatic passenger counter is a technology that is used to record the number of travelers using public transportation at a given time. So infrared bars at the doors can be used to or can be used for counting the number of passengers and also image recognition and optical character recognition can be used as automatic passenger counters. AI is coupled with Internet of Things to reap the optimum results. Now we have the AI applications of automatic passenger counters. So artificial intelligence is used to understand the significance of the present capacity as to what uh, as to uh, what is the present capacity of the train and as to how much should uh, the train be able to accommodate. And that likes what I said compared with the maximum capacity to deem whether more passengers are allowed or not. AI is used to set the weight and the passenger count limits. Also, it basically takes uh, factors like the build of the train and the length of the train, the dimensions of the train to decide as to what should be the weight and the passenger count limits also. Therefore, artificial intelligence has implications here as well. Now, electronic toll collection. So electronic toll collection is not something that is associated just with public transportation, but definitely it does give a one up over private transportation in this case. So electronic toll collection, basically uh, the main problem that arises with toll collection is that it's a very lengthy manual process. And only when the first car, the car that is located before the second one moves, would the second one be able to shift and take its place, right? So this is a major problem that is associated with toll collection and toll collection manually is a lengthy manual process. It renders the traffic delayed and sluggish. This means that a large light of vehicles that is just set to come up over here. Moreover, since cars are smaller, they could be accommodated, but bus and truck lines become huge and very, very lengthy. So how? can we find out a possible solution to this problem? A possible solution to this problem is electronic toll collection. So electronic toll collection offers a facility of cashless and immediate tolling, which eliminates the delay that happens on road. So as soon as your vehicle passes through an electronic toll collection booth, it uses services like Bluetooth and image recognition, as well as embedded systems and IoT to basically analyze, okay, what sort of vehicle is passing through it? And it then accesses the account details of the passenger, of the, the account details of the driver, Driver and deducts the and deducts the required toll fees, the toll charges from there. So ETC determines whether the vehicles passing through the toll plaza are enrolled in the program and electronically debits the accounts of the car owners without stopping by leveraging AI for decision making. Like I said, artificial intelligence is basically used to understand what sort of vehicle is passing through it because the rates drastically differ for cars, proportionately differ for cars and for buses. So public transportation rates are definitely lower than the ones for private transportation so image recognition is basically used to identify whether the vehicle passing through our electronic toll collection booth is a private is a public vehicle or a private vehicle if it's a private vehicle then more charges are to be deducted and if it's a public vehicle the so charges are to be deducted an ex fast tag is a very important example that is coming up lately so electronic toll collection initially started in orlando florida Let's just take a look at the examples of intelligent transportation, multimodal examples like in pop developed countries. We have London, UK. So London has a very comprehensive bus management system and the Oyster card, which is a single smart card, is needed to avail all public services from metros to uh, trams to all the trains available and all the buses available. You need to so have an Oyster card. Zurich, Switzerland is another very good example of multimodal transportation in public sector. Uh, Zurich has a profound network of buses, trams and trains, uh, very good systems, very good RTPI, uh, RTPI uh, systems, both on the trains, on the public vehicles, as well as on the stations. Next up, we have Florence, Italy as a perfect exemplification of a multimodal, trans uh, multimodal transportation. Uh, Florence has a well-managed system of public transport. There are video cameras and uh, automatic passenger counters. Uh, that are put up and then image processing and optical character recognition are used to basically count the number of vehicles so as to ensure there is no overcrowding and overloading.
If we take it, I see examples in developing countries like India. Indore is a very good example where high capacity bus based rapid transit systems are used. Features like electronic ticketing, automatic vehicle location and fleet management. Fleet basically means a set of buses that are governed by one control room. Fleet management systems are also very popular. So have started to become very popular in Indore as, a, uh, as it became a smart city. So Bangalore, India is also a very good example for ITAs in developing countries. There are CCTV surveillance systems in buses and there are also integrated traffic management systems so that uh, the, the images that are obtained from CCTVs can be analyzed and then they can be used to deem various roads as safe and various routes as unsafe or dangerous. New Delhi, India has a very stable and it has a very sound multimodal public transportation system. The, there is a Delhi Transit Bus Info application that's an example of an RTP, a real-time passenger information using things like GPS and automatic vehicle location. It has automatic fare collection as well using automatic ticketing as well as CCTV controls which really help in analyzing the images that are clicked and are used to deem whether the roads are safe or not. They are used to deem whether there is a there is an instance of overcrowding or not, and so on. Thank you. This was all I had for today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sonia. I feel like I also use public transportation all the time. So this was such a fun talk to just like hear from. And I especially love the part about a real time passenger information. I've occasionally waited out for a bus for a couple hours and had no information about why was it delayed? When is it coming? So absolutely fascinating. I would love AI to come to the greater Seattle area for our public transport system. But we have time Definitely. for one question for you. So out of all the challenges and solutions you presented, which one do you think will be the most challenging to implement in public transportation systems? So it basically depends on the country that we are talking about. So in countries like India, India is still a developing country. So RTPI and so on are not very difficult to implement because they are just GPS based systems. But um, instances like electronic toll collection would be really tedious to implement because of the machinery that is useful. Also, in India, there is a very big uh, manual solution that we have and that is that there are a lot of people who are actually working behind toll booths so once another atomic toll collection collection system is actually put up these people would lose their jobs so that is actually a very um, provident example wherein artificial intelligence is replacing jobs so this is actually where uh, this is actually a very big threat that could be taking place and that is why it, uh, electronic toll collections could not be implemented in india as of now however fast tags have been developed and be, as people skim through it um they, uh, more and more people uh, there are still people who work at the toll counters and who direct the passengers as to how should the fast tags be used so yeah there is a solution for everything as far as i believe awesome thank you so much sonia for coming on an absolutely fascinating talk and I learned so much. Okay, now we're going to transition to our next 